That's good. So, you know, I'm I'm going to ask you to share a story, and it's up to you if you want to share it or not. Or not. But you told me that there was a time when you were down there, and you were on Lake Chapella, and you were with a group of students, and something unexplained occurred down on the lake, and it was just one of those magical moments. Yes, it was a, one of the UFO things. I had a group of students, <laughs> and I looked, uh, looked at the lake, it's, it's quite large, and uh, we were, out, were outside having coffee or something between the break. And we all look up, and there was what we, uh, it was, as far as we can tell, a, a UFO. It was unexplicable. And uh, so there was, about, there was about seven or eight people that saw it, so it wasn't, it wasn't a lone, uh, a lone uh, witnessing. And uh, it, was, it, was, you know, it, was, it was exciting, but uh, it, it was moving pretty fast, and then it would stop and then turn around and move around again. So it was definitely something unusual. <laughs> you know, yeah. Sort of, sort of stand frozen in space, so to speak. So I was excited. Wow. So, um, my husband has turned out to be, I think, one of the great examples of your teaching and your mentoring. He has embraced your lifestyle, and he has, you know, gone on the artist's journey to um, try and achieve fame and greatness and financial security. And um, one of the things he told me, he's always told me, he tells me again and again, is that he saw you doing this artist journey with all these children with you, all of your beautiful sons. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. said he said no to having children because he was too afraid that if he had children, he wouldn't pursue his arts. And so yeah, it's yeah. always always been a great, great story for um, him to talk about that. But um, the first year that Rich came and he lived with you at the Finca, and I don't know how to say it. I think it's called Canias de De Albaida. 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 Yeah, Canias de Albaida, and it's a it's a very uh, it's the last it's the last uh, 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 thing on the on the road that goes up through the mountains. Yeah. And uh, it was never very famous, and uh, so it was perfect. You know, and there was no road. We crossed the Roman Bridge to get there by, by foot for many years, and finally they blasted in a road, you know. But before you had to walk it down across the Roman Bridge, it was quite a, it was quite a, quite a adventurous. And uh, then I had kids, so I found I finally, I finally got a motorcycle, and then we all pile on it, and I'd go down the path. And so <laughs> it got a little, more, a little more dangerous, probably, you know. Mm-hmm. So, talk about your first days. You take and you buy this finca, and Joseph, your fifth son, is a newborn baby, and you move right. into the you move into this finca, and you're going to start, you know, you're going to start your arts and growth classes, yeah. Yeah. and 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 talk about the the actual real condition of this abandoned olive oil. Yeah. Mill. Well, that was uh, there was all the old all the old equipment in there, big olive presses and things like that. And so, uh, I had to I had to, uh, I got junk people up to to pick it up. I'm kind of sorry I did after that because I had 400 olive trees, and uh, so I, I had to go out and, and kind of take care of the 400 olive trees as well. So it turned yeah. into sort of a multi multi a multi work. Uh huh. So. So the story you told me before was that when you moved in, there was no floor, there was no, no windows, there was no doors. No. <laughs> there was, there was a, bee, there's a beehive in the window, and I slept in the same room with the bees, and I got a lot of time. They, they, they didn't bother anybody. So, so I just left them there. Uh-huh. So they buzzed uh-huh. in and buzzed out. So, and it was very, pretty, it was very, very rustic. So I just, they never, they were, the walls were about you know, half a meter thick, and so... The big job was trying to put windows in because they didn't believe in windows in. And uh, so then I, it was always a job trying to go through about a foot, a foot of an adobe. So it was a challenge. A beautiful mm-hmm. place. It's, it's really beautiful. beautiful. And, uh, and it was known as the, it's sort of the centerpiece of the estate of, of a, a duquesa, a duchess. And she had, two, she had two or three places there like that. And, they, and of course, the, the villages were actually like the, the peonists who were, the, not the slaves, but the uh, they they all worked there. But everything revolved around Fika. So if I said I'm coming from the Fika, I didn't have to give my name or anything. They all 
Uh, see, here comes the guy from Sinka. So there's <laughs> kind of a, a notoriety. And uh, so when I passed through the village and all the time, I'd pass the line. I'd be stoned by the time I got through, you know. It was quite nice. <laughs> uh-huh. But lots of local wine was made in people's kitchens. And the nice part of the story that you always share is that the locals always shared their wine, and they had their 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 Boda bags, their Buda bags, yeah, right. or whatever you call them. Right. It's a, bo- and it's a Boda bag. It's a leather bag, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Goat skin. <laughs> well, it's, uh, and then, they, and then they, they put the pit inside of it to uh, take away. Uh, the good ones are just sort of, you know, they kind of soak it up. With it, but the ones they sell, they usually uh, put plastic something inside. But the real ones with the leather, and uh, I guess that it's, you know, help with help flavor, I guess. But the uh, the farmers who turned down the Buddha, and of course, you couldn't pass by one without talking and having a sip of wine. And so mm. <laughs> it, was, it was almost dangerous to get out at walking time because I'd, I'd come home uh, about half lit, you know, meeting my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> very good. beautiful people. Nice very, people. Mm. very, very mm. beautiful. So Rich's story always, uh, the story that he tells about the time he spent with you at the Finca was you got up in the morning and you did yoga, uh, you had breakfast, did yoga, and then it was studio time, and exactly. everybody came into the studio <laughs> and went to work. That's right. So it was, and it was a good regime. It was quite good, and uh, uh, and, and people people quite enjoyed it. You know, it seemed it seemed like it wasn't it wasn't like it was something that you know you had to do, but. Uh, they get up and uh, everybody got into it. And we had a lot of fun. actually had a lot of fun with them. And we would walk over the neighboring villages to have breakfast and things. And, no, it was, it was a uh, very relaxed type of uh, school, and that's where I sort of kept it. You know, and I call it arts and growth because I, I went to schools in nature, and then of course uh, the, the philosophy there is the, the the concept of the artist as a as a pivotal person in society, and uh, so it built up the ego that. It's quite good. I have fun with it. I'm still, I'm still doing it, actually. In right. Spain, I have uh, not as many students, but uh, I, have, I have some coming in just about all the time. And then good. they work with me. And so, no, no, I, well, I like teaching. I like, I like uh, sharing. But, uh, it really, really keeps it alive. I have fun with it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take us off topic for a second, and then I'm going to bring the story back around to you. I'm just going to take okay. a off for a second, okay? I'll, 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 be, I'll be listening, absolutely. Okay, good. So, um, Toynbee, who um, was a um, cultural anthropologist, he mm-hmm. said that a civilization uh, lived or died based on whether or not the creative minority was suppressed. So if you suppress the creative minority which is always about 10%. I always think that's so interesting. Take any society, there's been 26 civilizations on the planet that have come, um, that have come, and out of those 26 civilizations, 10 of them remain today. And the only time a civilization fails and falls apart is when the creative minority is suppressed. Mm. And so... Uh, mm-hmm. Right, so... So when you think about your work and your support and your encouragement and you living this life, because it's not an easy life. A lot of people can't do it. They don't have enough faith. Um, and you live this life and you support the creative minority by just going about and doing your work and believing that it will all be taken care of, and this is your philosophy. Um, you've done more than just be an art teacher and an artist. You've actually... Um, entered into the agreement to support a civilization and to keep it alive and to keep it well. And so I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out, so basically you started in 78. So for 42 years straight, you know, no gaps, you started yeah, before yeah. that in Mexico. But basically um, you have close, I think, close to 50 years as working as an art teacher, an artist, yeah. uh, learning, and if we go back a little bit further than that, you know, you started in your 20s, and that was your dream to be an artist. Right, so, exactly, yeah. Right? <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the whole dream. So, yeah, so I, did, I drove down to Mexico where it was really, really uh, much more receptive in the States uh, yeah. to me at, at that time, you know, and now, now it's better. But uh, 
So that's what the, I, I, you know. I say I escaped to Mexico, which I thought was going to be you know a new paradise, and it was for a while. It was really quite nice. And I lived right. on the Lake Chapala, and uh, I had people like Time Magazine come down and do articles and all sorts of stuff. It was quite exciting. Hmm. Very, very exciting. So I'm always sort of I'm always sort of surprised because the quality of your work is inspiring. Um, well, the subject that the, the subject that you cover is is always, you know, whether I'm looking at the archetypal process or I'm looking at the structure of the piece, it's it's always just, just amazing art to look at. So well, thank you. That's good. Yeah, no, it it really is. And it's kind of an interesting thing because um it's a greater responsibility to take and live out your dream than to actually figure out all of the ins and outs about art and being a business person and marketing and all of these other pieces. But it is nice to hear you say that you really um, had that chapter while you were living at the Finca where it was quite quite relaxed and quite beautiful and quite um, quite one with nature. You had to cross exactly. over a Roman bridge and you know walk in. And then, of course, the Finca turned out to be an incredibly beautiful building after you had worked on it for more than 20-some years. Then it turned out to be something quite special. And uh, it's a five star hotel now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a fact. It's a, I was stunned when I went out there. It's basically the same thing, but it was really a, it was a beautiful building. It's 50 meters long and about 11 something meters wide. And uh, so there's quite a number of rooms there. There's sort of two sections, a big dormitory, and a big classroom. And uh, so it's a. Uh, it's, it was made for something like that, I think. It, 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 was, it was perfect. And then nice grounds. I put it in a swimming pool, too, and so the whole thing became, I actually find it became too luxurious. <laughs> so, too nice. Too luxurious, yeah. <laughs> so did you think that when Rich, my lovely husband, came to be your student, did you actually think that he had what it took to become an artist? So just for everybody else's clarification, <laughs> Rich is your nephew through your sister Lois, yeah, right, and yeah. so and Lois never never tired of telling me how wonderful you were and how important you were in her life. Did you ever think that <laughs> when you had good. Rich Rich as a student that he would take and you know I mean this is I mean this is almost well, it's not forty years later but it's more than thirty five years later. Here it is thirty five years later. And you're watching him do his art. Did you ever believe that when you started teaching him, that he would turn into the artist that he is today, the great artist that he is today? Well, that's that's uh, that's always very open, you know. But the, he was always very enthusiastic about it, and uh, uh, it suits him well. And uh, he's doing a great job now. He's, he, he's quite good. He's quite skilled at all. So, so it was a good investment. I think, and I was very pleased with that. So. Oh, good. Uh, it's, it's, it's really you, nice. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you have Do you have any um, other family members who you obviously you know you pursue? I believe that um, as a parent, I believe children pick up a lot of information through osmosis. Just being around it, just knowing it, just seeing it all the time, they pick up a lot. And I never have been one to think that I had to teach or instruct my children. I figured if through um, seeing what was going on, the model behavior, they were interested in it, then they would express a desire to know more. And if they didn't express that, well, that was just who they were. They were different people. But any one of your children in particular come to mind today as being um, an artist, even in another area of the arts? I mean, I, I can think of several of your children that are artistic, but I'm curious to hear your opinion. Well, I have one that's a very good sculptor. And, of course, that's not a, a hard item, so he has a hard time making a living with it, uh, but he's a, a very good sculptor. And then I have others that have, uh, you know, they, they paint and, and draw and things like that, but none have gone totally what you call professional, where they depend upon it. And that's, mm. uh, yeah, it, it takes a, a little bit of fortitude for that because it doesn't always work every day. You know? It can be difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, so what, what would you say was sort of the, the magic sort of formula to, you know, because cause I've known Rich now for a long time. I mean, yeah, only, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've known him since 1999. And, mm. um, you know, we're coming up on nine years of marriage in October. And what would you say was sort of the the formula? I mean, an artist needs somebody to 
you know, take care of the day-to-day work, 